Ah, oh, hey you two, how are you going? Well today we're going to have a look at the Hawk Variometer System by Alex Nav. I'm very excited to test this out and try it. This is a software upgrade for specific variometers from Alex Nav. Unfortunately, if you've got an older device or variometer, it probably won't work, but it does work on the S100, S10 variometers, and also version 4 or later of the LX9000 series, as long as you've got the V80 or V8 variometer that comes with the LX9000. So what is the Hawk? What does it get you when you buy it? It's essentially three main features. The first is very fast and accurate wind detection. The second main thing is a much improved, faster and more accurate variometer and it includes the ability to ignore gusts. And the third feature is an artificial horizon. So how does Hawk compare to a normal variometer? Let's have a quick walk through existing variometers and how they work. The first is an analog variometer, much like your winter variometer that's included in a lot of gliders. They use a flask under the seat or behind the panel, uh, which works out whether or not the glider is gaining or losing energy. They're analog, they don't make any noises. So the next big upgrade that came along was electronic variometers. Traditionally, they use a total energy probe, just like the analog variometers do. But the key feature is they have electronic features so they can beep at you. They can tell you if the glider is gaining or losing energy uh, without actually having to look at the display. Over the years, people have been adding more and more features to electronic variometers, such as glide computers and the rest. So traditional variometers need several things to come into them to uh, give you the information. The first is you need a total energy probe. The second is you need a pitot tube, which is essentially the forward pressure of the air coming into the aircraft. And then you need static pressures as well, which is often on the side of your aircraft. The problem with total energy probes it's another piece of equipment on your aircraft. It's expensive, easy to damage, creates drag, and if you're not careful, you can get water in it and it becomes inoperative and your variometer doesn't work properly. In recent years, attempts have been made to remove the need for a total energy probe using electronic compensation. This uses the static ports and your pitot tube and also the, the gyros inside modern equipment these days to work out your total energy without needing the total energy probe. And in my testing, an electronically compensated variometer is almost identical to a pitot tube variometer. You can remove the total energy probe, reducing drag and less chance of snagging it as you're putting on your tail wheel. So the Hawk is the same as electronic compensation. It doesn't need total energy probe, except it's using different algorithm to figure out and calculate what's happening to the air mass around the glider. Once you know the air mass, you can work out the vario and is the glider gaining or losing energy. You can work out artificial horizon and they can work out exactly what the wind is doing around the aircraft. So it's a really powerful tool that really is transforming how the variometers work in a glider. So I thought I'd try and explain in a very simple, dumbed down way how this thing actually works. And I'm not going to go into too much detail. If you want to know more, check out the webinar from the creators of the Hawk system. They go into much more detail. There's a link in the description below. So the Hawk calculates in three dimensions around the aircraft what the EMS is doing using a non-linear Kalman filter. Let's consider just a two-dimensional example to simplify things. Let's say we have a glider traveling through the air at a known airspeed, say 10 knots. And we know that the ground speed from the GPS is 15 knots. And we don't have any other sensors. So we don't know which direction the glider is pointing, which direction it's heading. Is this enough information to work out the wind? Well, no, it's not. Because the problem is the wind could be coming from any direction at different strengths. We don't want to rely on magnetic sensors or anything else that the device doesn't have. What we can do though is look at another point in time. Then there's only one solution for the wind strength and direction 
to give you the correct answer for both points in time. And that's essentially the secret to this is it's calculating the air mass from multiple points of data over time. And that's way too much detail and I probably got that wrong even. So make sure you check out the webinar to hear the experts explain it properly. So Alex Nav are offering a 30 day demo. If you want to try this out on your Alex 9000 or S100, you need to request a demo license and you can do that on the Alex Nav website. They'll then send you an email with the license key and a file to install on the device. And you put that file onto an SD card, insert it into the device, do a software upgrade that looks for any firmware updates. It finds that file, copies it over to the machine. You then put in the serial number and that license is then active on that device. If you decide to go ahead and buy it, then it will be the same process as the demo. So the current price of the Hawk system is 990 euros. That currently equates to about if we look at US dollars, it's about 1,090 US dollars. So that may seem expensive. I guess keep in mind you are getting a artificial horizon with this, which in itself would normally cost quite a lot of money. The big question is, is it worth it? So stay tuned. We're going to have a really good in-depth look at how the Hawk works, how it's actually useful while you're flying, and is it worth paying the money to get all these fancy new features. So stay tuned for part two. We'll catch you soon.